Warning, the watches you're about to see do not have their times synchronized. Throughout this video, the watches will be showing different times. For a small subset of viewers, this may cause skin irritation, nosebleeds, night terrors, or death. Okay, these watches aren't in sync and they can't be in sync because the blue reference, the dark blue dial, this is a display unit. It doesn't actually function. So I figured it'd be better to have them all at different times than four of them at the same time and then one of them at 10.09. And I guess I have a display unit because these watches are pretty new, at least in the US. As far as I can tell, these were announced early this year, 2023, starting in Japan and really started hitting more markets this spring. But I saw photos of these early on and I was, I was pretty intrigued. I'm glad to be looking at more Citizen watches. Citizen makes some very interesting, fun stuff. And not just affordable watches either. A couple of times a month, I find myself looking at the high-end Citizen quartz watches. It used to be called the Chronomaster line, but it's just called the Citizen now. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But for most of us, especially outside of Japan, Citizen is all about sub $1,000 watches. And I think just until recently, the focus has been almost entirely on quartz watches, solar quartz watches. But now Citizen seems to be going after an enthusiast market with big pushes for mechanical watches, like the Fujitsubo, the challenge diver that I made a video about a few months ago. I'm sure for the vast, vast majority of Citizen customers, they want a watch that looks good to them and is easy and reliable as possible. But as you know, there's also a market for people like many of us who for some reason want a slightly more expensive watch that's less reliable and less accurate. Mechanical watches. And so these new watches could have easily been quartz, but they ain't, and I'm glad. And I'm also glad that these watches have a nickname. Tsuyosa. As you can see, that means strength in English. Tsuyosa. At the moment, these are all of the available Tsuyosa references. Yellow, blue, black, green, and sky blue. But I've seen that there are a few other references on the way. Fume dials, one with texture, and one with a rose-colored case. I don't know when these will be available, but they come in. I think that with all of these variants, and the integrated bracelet design and the affordability, I keep thinking, is this Citizen's answer to the Tissot PRX? Or if not intentionally a response, how do the Tsuyosa watches and the PRX compare? Because even if the brands aren't comparing these watches themselves, I think a lot of buyers will, and we're gonna get into that. First, let me throw down some facts about this watch. These watches list for $450, and I've definitely seen them for much less on several websites, for as low as $300 in some places. The cases are 40 millimeters across, 11.7 millimeters thick, and 45 millimeters long with no real lugs, or no traditional lugs at least. They use sapphire crystals on the front and have 50 meters of water resistance. They weigh 135 grams on the full bracelet. My wrist is 7 inches around, maybe you already know that. And I find that these watches wear like traditional 40mm watches even though they have a kind of integrated bracelet design. In some ways, maybe they wear even smaller than traditional 40mm watches. Because there aren't normal lugs, these watches are a little shorter than most 40mm watches. These are only 45mm long, so they're less likely to hang over the edges of someone's wrist. Now that's not a problem for dudes like me who are slightly above average in every way, but I do really like how these wear. I find them comfortable and I think they look really good too. And stylistically, I can't quite pin these watches down. They're not dressy for sure, and I wouldn't call them sport watches. They're very much, there's something in between. Whatever you call an Omega Aquaterra, that's what these are. Or a smooth bezel Rolex Datejust, or an Oyster Perpetual, that, yeah. And I don't think that's an accident. I think these watches definitely draw some influences from Rolex watches. And to be clear, I'm totally fine with that. The double markers at 12 and 6, the hands are identical. The Cyclops, the date magnifier, and of course, the colors. These really do remind me of a combination of Datejusts and the new colorful Oyster Perpetuals. 
But that's just the dials, and it's not even the dials, it's just the dial colors. These are actually finished in a different way. These Citizen watches have sunburst finishing, except for the black dial. And they're very pretty. You might even say they play with the light, which as some of you know is the third pillar of watch collecting, along with being mad at trivial things and flexing to no one. And between these colors, yellow. Absolutely yellow for me. I could see an argument for any of the dials, but except black. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with the black dial per se, but it's like, why black? What are you afraid of? Have some fun, please. But you're not going to get so much fun out of the loom. I found the application pretty light, a bit of a disappointment for me. And I didn't have high expectations for the bracelet or the clasp either, but they're pretty good for watches under $500 or even under $400 if you hunt around a bit. And I like the style. It's basically a president bracelet style. Three links with the center link being polished. The clasp isn't fancy. It has three micro adjustment spots and uses a twin button release. All very okay. It couldn't be more okay. Inside these watches is the Citizen Caliber 8210 movement. It beats at 3 hertz and has a power reserve of about 40 hours. Although it's not easy to hand wind this and neither is it to set the watch. The crown is recessed into the case at 4 o'clock. This gives the watch a really nice clean profile but it makes the crown a bit difficult to use. The crown by the way does not screw down but with this design it'd be almost impossible to accidentally pull it out while underwater. Now, whether I should or not, I do want to compare this watch to the Tissot PRX watches. That's another affordable, mechanical, integrated bracelet watch from another large watchmaker. 40mm mechanical PRX on a bracelet is $675, and again the 40mm Tsuyosa is $450, so the Citizen is much cheaper. Both watches use sapphire crystals. The PRX has more water resistance, 100 meters to the Citizen's 50 meters, clearly a winner on that measurement. And on the movement too, the PRX, it just has a better movement. The Powermatic 80 has 80 hours of power reserve and uses an anti-magnetic balance spring. The Swatch Group calls it Nivicron. On size, the two watches have a couple very similar dimensions, 40 millimeters wide and about 12 millimeters thick. But, and this is one of the most important things, the PRX wears much larger. The wider bracelet and the way the bracelet flares out, I think everyone with a wrist under 7 inches will find that the Citizen wears better than the Tissot. But that's all pretty subjective, and just like how you feel about the overall design. And I, I prefer how the Citizen looks. I like the PRX, and I think it's an unassailable value. But I collect watches more on how they look than on their value, which, now that I say it out loud, I guess that's basically a perfect description for a luxury consumer. And now I'm super duper sad. But anyway, I prefer the design of the Citizen watches. I find this design more interesting than the PRX watches. I like the case, the dial finishing, the hands, the bracelet looks better to me and is more comfortable on my wrist. And I also really like that the Citizen clasp has micro adjustments. The PRX bracelet doesn't have anything like that. But again, all very, very subjective. When it comes to overall quality, it's probably the PRX with the water resistance and the better movement, but you're also paying $225 more for that. And I know you hate this, but it's true. Neither of these watches is better than the other. It's only better or worse for you or for me. And if that bothers you, if you can't get your head around the fact that watch preferences are subjective, that there's no objective reality to the quality of a watch, if you need to know which watch is definitely, without a doubt, the better watch, then this is a terrible YouTube channel for you. So I'm excited to see where Citizen takes this new collection. New dial colors and new metal colors are already on the way. I think we could see some interesting strap options too, and I wouldn't kick a GMT version out of the watch box if you know what I mean. And if Citizen continues to keep these prices low, under $500, I think these could be how Citizen finally wins over those hardened hearts and minds of watch collectors. Thoughts and prayers to you all.